I'm going to show you an alternate support structure that's useful in situations where you need support on a section of your model that is above another section of your model, but you really don't want the support to be generated and built on top of your model. You want the support to be generated and built on the build plate. So we are going to use what's called tree support. Tree support will show up right here next to support structure. You may notice in your version of Cura that tree supports are not available. That's because like many useful features in Cura, they are hidden by default. To enable tree supports, you'll need to go to preferences, configure Cura, settings, and go to filter and type in tree. Here you'll see the checkbox for support structure. You want to check that. Once you check that, you'll notice that tree supports becomes available. We're going to choose that now. Tree supports are different from normal supports in that they grow like the branches of a tree bending out from a main trunk. This allows you to support areas of your model that are not over the build plate. In other words, you can support areas of the model that are directly over the model itself with the base of that support stemming from the build plate rather than the model. So let's have a look at what I mean. Here's our little model. This is an arc and this is 60, 70, 80 degree overhang. This needs support. Clearly it's over the model. If we choose normal and slice it. You're going to see that the support comes from the model up to the model. If you choose touching build plate and slice, you'll notice that the supports are not touching the model, but they're also not supporting the model. So we are going to choose tree supports, touching build plate, and see what happens. One very important thing to note is that when switching to tree supports as of Cura 5, support density will be set to zero by default. You can go ahead and use tree supports with the support density set to zero. Notice the slicing takes a bit longer. It's a slightly more complicated method while Cura calculates the best way to support your model. And would you look at that? Much like a tree, supports are now coming from the build plate only and then branching out to support the model at the 60 degree point that you specified. Unlike normal supports, if you choose everywhere and slice, tree supports will still attempt to support your model using only the build plate. You'll see right here that even though we chose everywhere, Cura decided we can support the model using only the build plate. So there it is. That's the basic usage of supports when it comes to 3D printing. Following these methods, you should be able to take any model, make a decision between tree and normal, make a decision between lower overhangs and higher overhangs, make a decision on the pattern or just leave it as default. And most important, make a decision on support density. 20% support density is almost always too much. And I highly recommend getting down closer to 10 and then tinkering around plus two or three, 11, 12, eight, nine, to find out the support density that you really need, seldom passing 15 or 20. In a future lesson, I will talk you through more advanced support options such as support blockers and Z distance. For now, go ahead and practice, find something to print, tinker with the supports, decide what you think will work, and then do a test print and find out if you were correct. If you weren't, go back, make the necessary adjustments and try again. When it comes to 3D printing, your 3D printer is capable of tremendous mileage and filament is quite affordable, so please don't be afraid to waste time or waste filament. Go ahead and print stuff. Test, 
fail, test, and fail again. Every time you do this, you'll learn more and more and more about the capabilities of 3D printing in general and the capabilities of your specific 3D printer.